always leave us. Or maybe not. Well, it's it. Hi, and welcome to the World of Mix. We are Mega Copy Games, and in this video, we are going to explain you how to play our game, Awkward Guests. A car game of mystery and deduction in which every play recreates differently the night Mr. Walton was murdered. Wow, it's a clue! It's not a clue! It's a clue! <laughs> At the end of the Ogre Guest rulebook, you will find a section of games. They are classified in five levels of difficulty, on a scale from initiation to very hard. Once you have chosen the game you are going to play, note its identifier down to find its solution when resolving the mystery. Take from the game cards, and without looking at their faces, those cards whose numbers are indicated. These cards compose the game deck, and they are the only ones you'll need in that game. Leave the rest inside the box, because you want to use them. Distribute to every player a tracking set, a resolution token, and a screen. The first player of the round will be chosen by the host, being considered the most awkward guest. Give him or her the first player CD and tell him to put it in front of him. Provide him the game deck to shuffle and deal six cards to each player. Two remaining cards are placed in the game pile in the middle of the table, accessible to everybody. Next to it, place the discard drawer. Discard cards will go in it, always with their faces down and with a classified information card on top. Leave space to the pile of prevailed cards. This place will be empty for the moment. Now you're ready to begin the investigation. Here we have an Orca Guest's card. The number in the upper left corner is the card value. It represents the amount of information it contains and varies from 1 to 3. In the upper right corner we can find the card references. These are the suspects or rooms of the Walton Mansion with whom or which the information is related to. In this space we find the provided information. The rest of the text serves to explain the development of the story and the setting, but they don't affect the game development. Turns in awkward guests. Follow the anti-clockwise order, and each round begins by the first player in that moment. In each turn, the active player has to communicate the orders to different references he or she wants to get information about. The possible references are Mr. Walton's guests and the rooms of his mansion. So, a player can ask for information about two suspects, two rooms, or one suspect in one room. Starting with the player directly to the right of the active player, anti-clockwise and in order, the inactive players choose among their cards those they want to exchange. Players can offer the cards they want on condition that the offer cards must have at least one of the proposed references. It isn't allowed to offer cards without any of the requested references. Each inactive player lifts the cards he or she wants to exchange face down on the table, reading out the sum of their information values and indicating it with an offer token. Decisions, once stated, are definitive 
and cannot be modified. After listening to all the inactive player's offers, the active player will choose with whom he or she wants to exchange cards. He or she can exchange cards with different players, as many as that player decides. To do that, he must give to any chosen player some cards from his hand, not modern their references. They must sum an information value similar to or higher than the cards that were offered to him or her. The exchanges are always made for all the offer points and it is not allowed to negotiate only for a part of them. Exchanges are made at the same time and once they have been completed, the turn goes to the next player. Just in the case that no player offers cards to exchange, the active player will be able to take three cards from the game pile. Let's see an example. It's Laura's turn, and she communicates to the rest of the players that she wants to get information related to Claudette Casalo and the living room. Ron hasn't offered cards to Laura, maybe because he hasn't, or maybe because he has, but he doesn't want to share information with her. Zabel checks his hand. He has three cards he could offer to exchange, but as he wants to hide one of them, he decides to offer Laura only the other two. He leaves the cards face down on the table, reading out the sum of their information values and indicating it with an offer token. Laura has received offers from Samuel and Mayans, so she can take three cards from the game pub. Laura decides to exchange cards only with Samuel, although she could exchange with both Mayans and Samuel. Laura gives Samuel cards from her hand, not modern their references, summon an information value similar to the value he offered. Only when a run has been completed, that's when everybody has made his or her inquiry. The players have the opportunity to resolve the misery in the resolution phase. In the next section of this video, we explain how it goes. If after the resolution phase the game continues, there is a discard phase, the remaining players must get rid of some cards to hold only three in their hand. These discard cards are placed face down into the discard drawer under the classified information card. Then, the first player standee goes to the person on the right of the player who had it. The new first player must deal to all players and one by one cards from the game pile to complete a hand of six. This is a resolution token. It has two sides, one to continue the investigation and the other to resolve. When a round has been completed, the players have the opportunity to resolve the misery in the resolution phase. Each one places his token on the table with the side of his decision face up, but covering it with his hand. When all the players have done the same, all the tokens are sung simultaneously. The players who decided to resolve the misery must write down clearly on the tracking sheet who murdered Mr. Walton, the motive why he or she committed the crime, and the weapon used to do it. If it is thought that the murderer had an accomplice, they must add who was him or her and the motive to cooperate in the murder. Remember that in any season, very easy and easy games, there is never any accomplice. Afterwards, each player considering a resolution has to consult the section of solutions to find out if he or she was right. They must reveal neither their approaches nor the solution of the misery. Everybody who guesses correctly all the details of the misery, murderer, weapon, motive, and if there was a complex and his or her motive, win and the game is over. If on the country none of them was right, these players who consider a wrong solution are eliminated and they must reveal their cards to the others. 
leaving them face up on the pile of rebellion cards. Then, a new resolution phase takes place. If none of the players wants to suggest a solution, the game continues. Finally, if there is only one remaining player, he or she wins, and the game will be also over. If the game pile is empty, take the discard pile in the discard drawer and shuffle them. The three first cards are put on the table faces up on the reveal cards pile. In that way, all the remaining detectives in the game receive extra information. The rest of cards are placed on the game pile so that players can continue drawing. Now don't waste your time and find my murderer.